Nobody likes bad movies. The idea of going to the movie theater and paying for a ticket and sitting through like 90 to 120 minutes of nothing is a horrible situation altogether. That's two hours you're never going to get back. A few weeks ago I decided to trot my way over to the AMC and watch a film called White Boy Rick. There was nothing that was really pushing me to see this other than the fact that the trailer looked kinda cool, but my point is I ended up really disappointed and walked out of the theater like, well that fucking sucked. The more I thought about it though, I realized White Boy Rick wasn't necessarily a bad movie by any means, it was just insanely forgettable. Now here's the deal, over the summer as some of you know, I went to see Tag, which I still think is a bad movie. The thing about bad movies is they keep you going. They don't just brush off your shoulder like White Boy Rick. When people hate movies, they write about them. I made a whole video about Tag. It's a lot of criticism, it's sparking up a lot of conversation. To me, I'd rather have a movie that I made hit someone like that than have them brush off years of work off their shoulder. Bad movies get articles and rants, at least they're getting something out of it. I mean, people are literally still talking about the Emoji Movie. Forgettable movies get nothing, and to me, that's almost worse. The scary part is that most of the time it's hard to understand as a filmmaker if you're making a forgettable movie. With a bad film, you can be working on it and realize at some point, ah yeah, this is, this is pretty bad. But with a forgettable movie, you might think you're on top of the world when all of a sudden nobody remembers you even made a movie in the first place. Forgettable movies are clearly important to me because of basically everything I just said. And with that being said, I think it's worth looking into what makes for a forgettable movie so that none of you lovely people end up in that sad situation. My online friend Taylor J. Williams tweeted out, A hot take film Twitter has super low standards for film scores. And I'm not really sure what he is specifically referring to, but I agree. You can get a string section together or play around with some synths and give yourself a score, but to be honest, most of the time that doesn't really cut it. The score is an insanely important part of giving film personality. Swiss Army Man is an incredibly unique film from a story perspective, but I somehow more vividly remember it for its stranger, reverb-heavy acapella score. Same goes for something like Arrival. Johan Johansson's score gives the film an even more atmospheric and mysterious tone, which enhances the experience of the film. There was a movie I saw earlier this year that I really enjoyed, and it was called Love, Simon. I thought it tackled its subject matter really well, it was enjoyable for a wider audience, and it was a significant film for mainstream filmmaking. But what's sad is that I literally forgot about about it, and I blame that on the bland score that it came with. There was really nothing to it, like, oh, you got some synths for the dramatic part, like, damn, honey, go, no, like, no! The film is already bland as is with its look, but that's passable, at least give us something interesting in sound. I believe an interesting sound is crucial to giving your film personality, and without it, you basically have nothing. Music is important, obviously, but let's not forget about the look, the cinematography. Nothing can turn an interesting story into a forgettable one faster than bland cinematography. Most people think visually, I, th I think I read that somewhere, I don't know. And with that being said, people will most of the time remember a shot faster than they will a specific line. I mean, obviously there are some exceptions. I am your father. You're gonna need a bigger boat. So you need! Villain. But those are iconic lines, it's rare you're gonna pull that off, so let's not rely on it. Here's how I'll put this. I personally think that churches and religious films are boring, unless your film is first reformed. This is a film that could have been tragically forgettable, like it was almost built to be like that. But to be honest, this ended up being kind of the least forgettable film of the year. I think about this film almost every day, and I owe that to a lot of factors of the film, but one of the biggest is the cinematography. This film looks absolutely stunning. It made churches look so cool and clean and made me appreciate the architecture on a whole new level. Not to mention how much personality these shots have. They feel like shots that only belong in this movie and could not exist anywhere else. That's what I call good cinematography. It is quite possibly the best shot film of the year. And then you have something like Disobedience, which is maybe the most forgettable film of the year. Disobedience and First Reformed are obviously completely different films, they, they tackle completely different topics, but they do have a similar color palette and occasionally deal with the same imagery, and when comparing them, it's clear that First Reformed is just so much more interesting. And I blame that on, again, the cinematography. A more popular example would be A Quiet Place. Remember when people were calling this the best movie of the year? Like. Like, I already forgot that it existed. And that sucks, because the writing is incredibly interesting, and seeing a movie take such a big risk and hit it big is great to see nowadays. But dude, this thing was shot in the most boring way possible. It didn't play with light in any interesting way, it didn't play with any angles. I mean, there was this shot, but like, dude, 
it, like big whoop you got you got a lot in one shot congrats it's not a horrible movie at all it's actually pretty great but i'm looking at it like this i literally completely forgot a movie that was being talked about all the time after just a few months and i blame a lot of that on how it looked the cinematography is a crucial part to making a memorable movie especially when taking into consideration how much creative freedom is wasted if it's done so blandly I suffer from a pretty common condition amongst film viewers, where if the ending of a given film is amazing, I may just forget about the mediocrity of the rest of the movie and rate a film based on those last 20 minutes. Obviously this is not a great way of criticizing film, but I think it says a lot about the importance of a film's ending. The main example I want to talk about is the difference between The Incredibles 1 and The Incredibles 2. The Incredibles is, in my opinion, a masterpiece from not only an animation standpoint, but a visual storytelling standpoint as well. To be honest, it's anything but forgettable. And when I posted tweet me some movies you consider extremely forgettable, a good amount of people said The Incredibles 2. And I agree. The first Incredibles ending is so fulfilling. Traits from every main character come together to beat what has been the main conflict throughout the entirety of the film. It's a situation with a specific outcome that could only exist in the movie with these characters. Do you even remember the ending for The Incredibles 2? There's like a, a ship or something? I don't know. It just feels so separate from the heart of these characters. It concentrates more on utilizing their powers than their motivations, which is something the first film did exceptionally well. This is a reason I feel as though a lot of people find Marvel films so forgettable. Before you nerds get at me, let me just say this. Obviously Marvel isn't forgettable when you're on the inside and you genuinely care about all the lore going on, but if you're an outsider, yeah, they're pretty forgettable. I blame this on most of what I've talked about so far, but I think the endings are a crucial part in what makes them not very memorable. I blame this on the fact that Marvel acts in a way where they're consistently setting up for the next movie, and the next movie, and the next- And so with that, you rarely get an ending that feels like a grand conclusion. The characters, of course, change from the beginning to the end, but they're never complete in their formation, leaving us with a pretty generic and formulaic finale. Referring back to the beginning, White Boy Rick falls into all of these categories. It has blank bland music, bland cinematography, and an underwhelming and rushed ending. The funny part is that White Boy Rick is just one of many films that aren't necessarily bad, but are forgotten within months due to these same flaws. A lot of my enjoyment from filmmaking comes from discussing it. I have built an entire YouTube channel around discussing film. And the thing is, forgettable movies make film boring. They make it feel like more of a business with products that come and go rather than pieces of art that we're supposed to latch onto. So with all that being said, if you plan on making a movie, put some interesting music behind it, make your cinematography pop, and really craft a memorable ending. Or else, your film might just end up in the $5 bin at your nearest gas station.